if this is your first time watching uh, my little dog and pony show I call my YouTube channel I want to say thank you and welcome and I appreciate you tuning in to follow along with us take a minute click subscribe smash the bell because I'm always doing cool shit over here I always am doing fun stuff if uh, you're following along to follow along with the saga you are a repeater offender and I want to say welcome back and I thank you for being here so what we're here today to do is to look at Mr. P's 1x2. This is a Fat Boy Products. Um, 1x2. It's a 2290 Drive-In 2 HG 2879s. And the note that he attached was really straightforward, clean and to the point. Power fell off. Help me, BBI. You're my only hope. Quote Star Wars there. Because, you know, we can't make it through one of these YouTube videos without some kind of silly Star Wars analogy. I mean, tsh, really? Um, it's simple. He popped this pill. We know this because the L smoke A detector has gone out. Now, we all know the story of the Frenchman, um, Le Pew Le Smokey, and he theorized and did his whole doctoral thesis paperwork on that all electronics, come on, you're going to focus $7 million camera and you can't figure out focus at this tight of an angle. Okay. Focus even closer? No, we can't. Anyhow, Mr. Smokey, he came to the conclusion that all electronic parts worked on containing magic smoke. And they would do the job that they were designed to do until the old magic smoke was released. He used to be able to go buy bottles of smoke. Electronic smoke in a can. And his whole theoretical purpose or thesis was written to state that if we can just keep the electrical smoke inside the components, they'll work forever. Take that as you wish. But the electrical smoke indicator, this resistor right here has gone bad. Now, if you've been around this, this game for a hot minute, like more than a week or two, somebody will inevitably come along and say, oh, the 10 ohm smoke come out. What they're talking about is this 10 ohm resistor um, destroying itself after the transistor goes to ground and opens up. Um, the smoke comes out and the transistor is no longer working. The 10 ohm smoke is a direct re representation of the transistor being popped. So what we have to do here to do this repair properly is one of two things. One of two things. Option number one is we pull both the transistors out and this one's still good. We put it on our rough beta gain checker, our Alice DC75 Pro, and it's a rough checker. It's not an absolute precision checker it's just a rough checker um, and we see what the beta gain is and if we have another 2879 16d08 transistor that we can put into this hole that has the same beta gain as this one we replace this transistor with one that is beta gain matched to this one and we go on with our day that means we only have to replace one part now if we don't have a used one that's got a beta gain that's roughly the same as this one to match this one so we have to have beta gain on this one, and okay. That means we need to replace them both. In most schools of thought, according to most ant builders, you replace both the transistors. That is your safest bet. Now, Mr. P sent me this thing, and he says, man, fix it. Well, it got squirreled away on the shelf, and it got moved up, and this would be the next one up on the inventory of things to fix. Now, please keep in mind, you guys that are watching for the first time, following along, whatever, we still have one, two, three, four, five amps to go in the Mr. P project. I just needed to hop over and start pumping some of these out, some of these other repairs for these other guys. That was sucking up too much time. I was going to try and do them all in one day, and it ended up turning into a week and a half long affair. So, to keep the flow going, this is going to sound like a Tampax commercial. To uh, stop the flow of phone calls of people saying, well, you said mine was next, and you only had this many to go. I've got to keep going on doing repairs. So we're going to inter interweave the Mr. V project in amongst a couple of these others. So now that you've had a few minutes to digest what we're looking at, your eyes have probably wandered up, and they've picked up on this little visual cue right here. This resistor is not bad, but it's a little warm. It's been warm. And that means that we've been driving the piss out of this transistor. So this transistor is jumping up and down for all might's and joy in God and country. And it's just a hair too much drive for these two transistors. And it's backing up here to this resistor and it's getting hot. 
So we're going to leave this alone for right now. We'll come back to it later. But for the moment, we've got to focus on these two transistors. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to pull both of these parts out. And then when we come back, we'll be testing them. And I'm pretty sure we're just going to replace both transistors since I don't have a lot of used HD sitting around here, but I do have a lot of new ones. So we'll pop both of these out. This one is obviously bad. And it'd probably be just easiest for us to slap two brand new transistors in here and not even worry about it. But we're going to pop these out. We're going to beta, uh, beta gain check this one. And I'll probably return this one with that amp so the guy's got an extra transistor for whatever reason. So away we go. So like I was saying in the previous segment, this is the Atlas DCA75 Pro. Now there are some technicians out there that poo-poo this transistor checker. Oh, it's not an absolute tester. Look, all we're trying to establish is if the thing is good. What we're talking about is the thing is the transistor. Or if it's bad, and give us a rough gain number. So we can get out our big curve trace machine, or we can just hook up this little guy and it'll be good or bad in a conversation. This is close enough for us to be able to figure out if the part works or doesn't. This has a gain of nine, this transistor, nine. <clears throat> nine. So put nine on it. This one's going to be bad. Test. Dead short. Diode junction. Failure. I don't know. This has never done me wrong. And all the different um, transistor checkers I've got all read within about 10% of this thing. Except for my big one. My 200 amp checker, which will allow me to put a ton of pressure on the transistor. So we're going to write bad on this one. We'll put a big B on it, okay? Bad. Depending on what the customer wants to do, those can either go back to him or they can stay here. I don't frankly care. This is our 10 ohm resistor that was bad. We're going to throw it away. And now let's come on down here and let's go to work. Here's our brand new tested HG16D08s. Let's go in here. We'll put a little bit of slobber down here. More slobber here. Get all nice and smooth and pretty, like we know what we're doing. Okay, let's grab our Hemos. We'll reinstall that flyback. Install this flyback. There we go. Oh, 
And now, squirt a little clear on it to keep it from corroding in the future. thousand watt slug and peak, thousand watt slug and average next to it here, a five watt slug here. So we're on 12 volts at the moment. Let's turn the amp off. Hello, one, two, one, two, one, two. All right. Let's turn our dead key down on our radio. Let's put that in a forward position. We'll dial this down to one watt or just a hair below it. Remember, this is a one Driving two. Hello. One, two, one, two, one, two. Which means low drive. All right. Amp is working. I'll bring our voltage up. So let's bring our next meter into play. Floating at 14.9. That's our amperage draw. Hello. Hello. One, two. Hello. One, two. Hello, one, two. Hello, one, two. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. Okay. So we're getting a nice smooth 500 watts. Hello, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. Like 510. Hello. Pulling about 70 amps. So. The thing that you hear sparking a little bit is that we didn't take the time to wait for the clear to fully dry. So when we modulate the clears just a little bit. This will dry and that'll quit. Yeah. Let's plug it back in here, dummy. Okay. Hello, one, two. Hello, one, two, one, two, one, two. Hello, audio, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. Let's go up here. Let's take a quick look at our input tune. Hello, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. Perfectly acceptable. All right. Well, let's put our fan lid on it and let's test it full out. Hello, one, two, one, two. I'm going to call this done. That was easy fix. Quick, easy, and down and dirty. Done, done, and done. Well, Mr. P, you're all set up. Um, I'll give you a shout. We'll get this thing sent back to you. On that note, we're moving on. Um, I'm going to take my clip back off of your connector, Mr. P, by the way. But uh, we'll throw ourselves a sticker on here. So Mr. P can say it was here because, well, it was here. Do do do. Do 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 do. day. All right, on that note, gentlemen, I'm out. I appreciate every single one of you guys. Um, just a quick little one, two, three, get her done. And uh, yeah, that's it. So thanks for tuning in. Thanks for watching. Thanks for following along. And yeah, we'll see you on the next one. Gentlemen, I'm Bump from the Biggest Duck in Idaho. We'll see you. Bye-bye.